In this video, we are forecasting severe weather in the Sun Belt and Mid-Atlantic regions once again. The Storm Prediction Center has issued a slight risk of severe weather with a 15% chance of significant damaging hail. Then, we're going to look a little further into the future as the storm chances just keep on keeping on. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast, and we're going to jump right into it with a big old view of the United States of America. As you can see, we've got a lot of showers and storms out there this morning, but it's only going to continue to increase as we go later on into the day. I've got the Storm Prediction Center outlook. Uh, placed on here and you can see the areas shaded in yellow are the areas most likely to receive severe weather today. Over here on the east coast we've got a little part of West Virginia and a lot of Northern Virginia and Southern Maryland uh, included in the slight risk of severe weather that's going to include uh, Richmond and Charlottesville in Virginia. Much of the I-64 corridor that connects Richmond and Lexington and also a little bit of the I-95 corridor that goes up to Washington DC. We are expecting some thunderstorms over here today with really heavy rain, large hail and some damaging winds being the main threat. Now, if we skedaddle over here down to the southwest, we can see that Fort Stockton, Midland, Pecos, and San Angelo are all included in a slight risk in Texas. That also includes Roswell and Hobbs and Carlsbad in southeast New Mexico. Uh, the big threat over here is going to be large hail, and actually there is a 5% chance of tornadoes over here. And we can talk about all that and more on the weather models. All right, we're going to start off by looking at the old trusty HRRR model. And actually, the old trusty HRRR model isn't very trusty anymore. <laughs> it's let us down over the past couple storm systems. It's really having a hard time working with these outflow boundaries in the Great Plains. So we're going to take what we see today with a grain of salt, and we're going to look for overall patterns, okay? I'm going to show you the composite reflectivity. This is what the radar could look like as we go later on into the day. But understand that this isn't exactly what the radar is going to look like, okay? Uh, we're just showing you this to give you a general idea of what to expect later today. Now, as always, the date and time is going to be constantly displayed above my head there, but remember, that's going to be in Eastern Daylight Time, uh, and what we're talking about right here is going to be in Central Time. We're going to look at the South Central U.S. first, then we're going to look at the Mid-Atlantic, okay? So here we are starting off at around 11 a.m. today. This is around the time this video should go up, and as you can see, we got some storms and showers moving through Louisiana and Mississippi. Those are going to continue to dissipate as they move off to the South and East, and we're really going to be watching this area over here for additional convection, as that's where that slight risk of severe weather exists today. Now, let's put this into motion, and as you can see, right around 4 o'clock, 3 p.m. Central, we're going to see some storms popping up in Central Texas and Southwestern Texas. Uh, we can also see a little bit of stuff showing up here in New Mexico and the northern panhandle of Texas, and actually what this looks like to me is there's a little outflow boundary from the storms we saw yesterday that is kind of heading to the south here. It's going to meet up with some warmer air, especially during the daylight heating hours of the day, and we're going to see some possibly big storms pop up right here in the middle of Texas. Now, the Storm Prediction Center doesn't have a slight risk of severe weather that extends out here, and I'm actually kind of conflicted on why that is, because it does look like to me that the most likely area of convection today is going to be right in here, uh, but some of the other parameters that we look at to just forecast severe weather, like the lower level jet stream and the convective values and all that stuff, those are a little higher over here, so I guess we do have a little bit of a higher chance of seeing some of that significant hail and the tornado threat over here a little bit further to the west, but I want you to understand, if you live in central Texas all the way into east Eastern Texas and maybe even southeastern Texas today, uh, definitely don't let your guard down because we're going to have some big storms with probably some uh, medium-sized hail, maybe a couple damaging wind gusts, and almost certainly some very heavy rain. We saw a lot of flooding issues yesterday, and my gut tells me we're going to experience some flooding issues today as well, especially in uh, south central Texas here, or literally right smack dab in the middle of Texas there, uh, where this first supercell thunderstorm is predicted to pop up around four o'clock today. So let's keep pushing this forward. As you can see, that radar looks nasty over here, uh, as some of these storms do look like they could produce some pretty large hail, even into central Texas here. But our main axis of severe weather is starting to pop up over here from Lubbock, Texas to Midland, all the way down into the Big Bend National Park area. Once again, big time hailstones is going to be possible here, but you can't roll out an isolated tornado or two. If we look at that lower level jet stream, which is going to help us get uh, that cyclonic rotation in the atmosphere. Uh, if we go out to about 9 p.m. tonight after these storms really start getting together, we can see that we see some areas that are approaching 40 or 50 knots, uh, and that's the danger zone when it comes to low-level jet system in a situation like this, okay? So I do think as we go later on to the evening, southwestern Texas down here, we are expecting uh, a pretty uh, decent tornado threat. It's not going to be a widespread tornado outbreak, uh, but once again, we do have that 5% chance of tornadoes, and I do think we're going to see at least a couple today, okay? So if you live down here, make sure you have a plan in place uh, to take shelter if you get that tornado warning coming through.
coming through. Now back here at five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, you can see that the initial uh, band of storms over here in Eastern Texas is gonna be pretty linear in nature or multicellular. I'm not expecting to see a bunch of supercell thunderstorms out of this, but these are gonna be heavy rainers. We got a lot of moisture out here. We got that free Gulf of Mexico flow there. Uh, so anytime you get under a storm over here in Eastern Texas today, it's gonna drop a lot of rain really fast. And you can see uh, the eastward motion here is going to kind of run these storms over the same areas over and over again. That's why I think we're gonna have uh, some pretty significant flooding problems over here today. Uh, here we are around 11 p.m. Once again, we got uh, some big storms over here in southwestern Texas, even as far south, the San Antonio and Carrizo Springs area. Uh, these storms are, once again, going to be pretty intense with large hail, and especially right in here around the Big Bend, north and east of the Big, big Bend region. Uh, that's where I think we're gonna have the best chance to see uh, possibly a tornado or two. And as you can see, some of these storms are starting to form into linear modes uh, where we can expect to see some bow echoes on radar today, and we may even see some straight line damaging winds uh, with these squall lines of storms as they move through. Check this out. Once we get into 1 a.m., everything kind of congeals together, and we've just got a big rainmaker with maybe some small hail at this point, and uh, just a ton of lightning, ton of thunder, and heavy rain is going to be expected here, and this is going to be training over some of the areas that saw uh, you know a significant amount of rain earlier in the day. Okay, The severe weather threat goes down significantly here as we head into 3 a.m., but once again, the heavy rain sticks with us all the way through into 9 a.m., and then everything's going to be clearing out, and Texas is finally going to be getting a little bit of break, especially over here uh, in the eastern part, but <laughs> I think the next day we are going to see some more storms over here in West Texas. Let's pour, pull it forward just a little bit more, and yeah, there they go. As you can see, as we get into Saturday, especially later in the day on Saturday, we got some more storms forming here. Uh, in the panhandles of Oklahoma and Texas, this actually doesn't look like it's going to be a significant severe weather event, uh, but once again, we do have an unimpeded flow of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico here. We've got some cool air behind it, and we do have a low-level jet that's going to try to crank up here uh, from uh, eastern Colorado, western Kansas, all the way down into the panhandles of Oklahoma and Texas. So an isolated tornado cannot be ruled out here as we get into Saturday, okay? I just wanted to show you that. That's kind of what the radar could look like over the next, you know, 48 hours. So there you go. Let's look at the Mid-Atlantic now. All right, once again, finally getting to look at some of these eastern states. I know some of you guys feel like I've been neglecting you over the past couple of months, but really nothing's been going on out here. <laughs> My expertise and experience as a meteorologist or weather analyzer, whatever you want to call me, uh, really is focused on the eastern part of the United States. So uh, anytime we have any sort of weather going on over here, I am going to talk about it, but it's been kind of quiet here recently. That's going to change today as we do have that slight risk of severe weather. Uh, here we are around 2 p.m. We're going to see a, uh, you know, a cluster of thunderstorms moving through West Virginia at this point. Uh, at least over in Texas, in southwestern Texas today, we have a decent tornado threat. Today, uh, over here in northern Virginia and the panhandles of West Virginia and Maryland, all the way over into Delaware, we only have a very slight risk of uh, maybe some hail that can cause damage to your cars, and then maybe some isolated wind events where we see you know, tree limbs coming down, maybe some power outages here and there. Uh, this is gonna be your uh, typical severe weather day uh, in Northern Virginia, okay? We're not expecting anything crazy, okay? Uh, however, uh, it, we are gonna get a lot of rain, okay? Especially north of the main axis of severe weather. You can see here in Pennsylvania, and you'll see this move east too, uh, into New Jersey, New York City, uh, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts. Just a big old blob of precipitation is gonna be moving over the area for an extended period of time. And I do think we're also gonna have some problems with flooding up here. Now, I don't think this is gonna be as much of a flash flooding problem, but definitely a prolonged period of heavy rain, uh, two or three inches of rain possible widespread uh, that could lead to some uh, you know tributary flooding and maybe even some river flooding especially in southeastern uh, Pennsylvania there uh, but let's focus on these severe thunderstorms as they move into the northern part of Virginia around 4 o'clock p.m. today uh, they're gonna be packing a punch with some small hail and maybe some straight line damaging winds uh, definitely gonna see so a lot of lightning today because uh, those humidity values are gonna be pretty high as they move through and then it looks like around 6 p.m. Uh, they're gonna be moving into the uh, Washington DC area okay Okay. And at this point, this is actually when they're forecasted to be at their biggest uh, intensity. Okay, So uh, if these storms cause any damage today or cause any problems, they're likely going to cause those problems right around the Washington, D.C. area. So uh, be weather aware out there. Make sure you have some way of getting that severe thunderstorm warning whenever it comes through. The tornado threat out here is minimal. We got a 2% chance from the Storm Prediction Center. So it's not zero. Uh, but once again, I, do, I would be surprised if we saw a tornado today, uh, but we can't rule it out. Here we go. 
go. We're working into the Delmarva Peninsula now with these uh, big time thunderstorms as they move through. And then once we get into 9 p.m. and 10 p.m., they're going to weaken significantly and just become a part of the big rainmaker that we see here in Jersey all the way out into Long Island. Uh, we do have some uh, additional thunderstorms that may move into the uh, Virginia Beach area later into the night. Uh, but once again, nothing too significant there. Really, the big story here is going to be the rain. Look at this. Even as we go all the way out into tomorrow, we've got more rain popping up and uh, we just kind of uh, the further south you are, I would say that we have a, a greater chance of flash flooding, but the further north you are, especially right along that axis there from uh, the southern areas of Pennsylvania into central Jersey, all the way into uh, Long Island uh, in uh, Delaware, I think that we are going to be talking about a uh, more prolonged regular flooding event, but I can't help but notice the uh, risk for flash flooding here on the southern axis of that precipitation, especially the closer you get to the Appalachian region over here. You guys know if you live over there, uh, a lot of the times when you, we get a lot of rain in a short period of time, all that rain falls on the mountains and then just goes right into the valleys. And it's really easy to experience some flooding problems over there. So be on the lookout for that if you live in a flood prone area. I do want to zoom out here a little bit and kind of <laughs> rewind a little bit because these storms, even though they're going to be most intense over here in the mid Atlantic regions and the uh, eastern Appalachian regions, they are also going to affect eastern Kentucky, eastern. Tennessee, some parts of North Carolina, and even parts of the deep south over here. So let's really quickly run through the radar imagery here. You can see that these storms are going to try to ramp up in uh, western West Virginia, eastern Kentucky, southern Ohio, maybe even parts of central Kentucky and Indiana are going to get some storms with maybe some very small hail and some lightning and some thunder. Uh, nothing, you know, very... <laughs> Uh, impressive showing up here, uh, but I do think that some heavier rain and some more uh, impressive storms will happen here in eastern Tennessee around 3 o'clock p.m. Uh, also, Alabama and Georgia will be getting in on the Thunder Boomer action as we go later on into the evening, but it's all going to dissipate pretty quickly. And then once again, we're just left with all this rain as we go into tomorrow uh, for this area right here. So uh, if you live in Maryland, if you live in Pennsylvania, Jersey, you know, anywhere in that mid Atlantic area or the coastal regions of New England, uh, all the way down into the Appalachian regions of Western Virginia in Eastern West Virginia. Watch out for flooding if that's a problem that you normally have. Once again, two to three inches of rain, maybe even three or four inches of rain possible here uh, as we look into the panhandles of West Virginia and Maryland all the way out into the Delmarva Peninsula. Let's check out that medium range forecast now. All right, now we're zoomed out on the whole United States and we're looking at the Euro model, okay? That'll allow us to look a little bit further into the future and we're starting off at Saturday night at 11 p.m. You can see all that rain over here in the East Coast that's really starting to wrap up. Uh, and really, it's, I mean, like, what? <laughs> There's really not a lot going on outside of that, okay? We're in that summer pattern where 540 lines way up here in Canada, so we don't have to worry about any significantly cool weather. However, it is going to cool off a lot here in the Ohio Valley and Northeast over the next couple days. It's not going to be cold per se, uh, but it is going to be significant significantly cooler than what we have been seeing. We've been experiencing uh, a heat wave, especially in the southeast here, and I think we're going to get a little bit of a break from that as we go forward. Let's watch that happen. You can see uh, the little trough here that's going to try to allow some of that cooler air from Canada to come in. Uh, and then on top of that, we have another storm system forming up here on Sunday uh, in the plains in the front range of Colorado all the way down into Mexico. Uh, that may actually be another severe weather uh, maker, a multi-day severe weather maker as we go all the way through Monday, and uh, it'll be a pretty good chance for uh, storm chasers to get out there and probably uh, see some stuff. I don't think we're looking at a widespread severe weather outbreak here, but definitely something uh, to watch as we go forward. Now, here's something interesting. We've been looking at of some very dry conditions, very hot uh, and, and just like almost drought like conditions here in the southeast over the past, uh, you know, a couple weeks or so. And now we're transitioning over into our traditional summer pattern where we get in this axis of moisture, okay? There's just gonna be a ton of moisture coming up from the Gulf of Mexico here. And every day during the heating of the day after Wednesday, June 2nd, we're gonna have this uh, uh, situation where it's possible that anybody in this area gets a pop-up shower or a thunderstorm, okay? You, if you've lived out here in the East Coast, especially uh, in this region right in here, you know what I'm talking about, okay? Uh, there's a 20% chance of rain every day.
day and who knows if you're going to get it or not every once in a while a big thunderstorm will pop up right on your head or maybe a, a thunderstorm will pop up 30 miles to your south and you never get rain yourself uh, that's kind of the pattern that we're going to be in here as you can see uh, just constant inundation of rain chances and moisture on the east coast as we go all the way through sunday june 6th at 8 o'clock p.m and that's going to keep us a lot cooler and it's going to uh really help us out with the people that are have been experiencing way too dry conditions i know here where i live it's just a dust storm out there every day that the wind blows son <laughs> so i'm excited for the rain and for the isolated uh, storm chances and we may see some severe weather out of this too uh, we'll just have to wait until we get closer to it to really nail down those exact chances all right that's all the weather talk i have for you today thank you so much for watching this video and always being here and sticking with me and subscribing and all that stuff if you haven't yet smash that like button subscribe and turn notifications on that way you get a notification every time i upload which is hopefully going to be mostly every day from here on out and also whenever i go live if we have a big severe weather event uh tornado warning uh for a really populated area or anything like that i'm going to try to go live uh, so that i can uh, walk you through it as we go through that situation and that's all i got for you thank you for being here i'll see you in the next one good